Hello everyone, welcome to my Spring 2022 wrap project. My patient is a 65 year old white female of Irish ethnicity. She's been retired for the past five years and has been married for over 35 years. Her chief complaint were insecurities about her oral hygiene status and the current status of her oral health. She is a non-smoker and rarely drinks, only socially. Parts of the medical history summary include some surgeries. In 1992, she had a C-section delivering her third child with no complications. In 2004, she had a hysterectomy with an iatrogenic infection by a 4x4 being left inside. The 4x4 was removed a week later and she was treated with IV antibiotics. Uh, in 2014, she had cataract surgery with no complications. The family history is unknown because she was adopted and there was no contact with her biological parents. The only systemic condition is asthma induced by cold air and seasonal changes. All the baseline vitals were within normal limits, taken 3 4 20, 22, And the only current medication is albuterol. Ventolin is a beta-2 agonist, and it treats bronchospasm. As you know, the dental implication is xerostomia and a decrease in salivary flow that leaves her at an increased risk for caries, candida infection, and higher accumulation of biofilm. The body mass index is 33, considered to be obese class 1, and the correlation of the ASA status would be ASA 2 because of the BAMI between 30 and 40, the allergies to latex, sulfur drugs, and compassine, an anti-emetic drug, and well-controlled mild lung disease, asthma. Gingival description for the periodontal assessment. The maxillary free gingiva presents with marginal redness, a soft consistency, a shiny glossy textures, and some rolled borders with blunted papilla. The attached gingiva on the maxillary appears pink, fibrotic, and hyperkeratinized. I think this is due to mouth breathing and or bruxism. It is stippled in texture though. The mandibular free gingiva appears with marginal redness, spongy consistency, some shiny texture, rolled borders, and bulbous papilla. The mandibular attached gingiva is pink and also fibrotic with hyperkeratinization and there is some stippling except for the central incisors. The patient presented with a plaque index of 58%, a moderate bleeding index of 29%, a generalized 2 to 4 millimeter pockets with a localized 5 millimeter pocket on the mesobogal surface of tooth number 27. There were frications on the mesials class 1 of tooth number 2 and number 15. Both these teeth are super erupted due to them having non-opposing teeth. The recession was 1 mm on tooth number 20 and 2 mm on tooth number 29. The mobility was Miller's class 0 with barely discernible movement or normal physiological movement. The AAP classification was stage 2 which I will further elaborate on the following slide. AAP classification stage 2 is due to evidence of radiographic bone loss to 15 to 33 percent extending to the coronal third and maximum probing depths of equal to or less than 5 millimeters. On tooth number 2 we have an MOD amalgam with recurrent decay on the mesial and distal surfaces. We have a gold DO onlay on tooth number 5. We have two endodontically treated teeth number 13 and 15 which have radiolucencies at the apices which will be re-evaluated at each recare appointment. We have a DO composite on tooth number 20 with a missing distal surface, and we have an amalgam class 2 DO on tooth number 29. We also have a radiopaque artifact right here, which will be evaluated for symptoms at the next recare appointment. The treatment plan for this patient will require five appointments. The first will be an assessment, FMX, signatures and consent, and she will be given our first set of diet journals. The second appointment will require a set of intraoral images, a plaque index, and a second set of diet journals. The third appointment will require OHI and lower arch scaling. The fourth will be upper arch scaling, a lower arch deep plaque if needed, and a full mouth polish. The fifth appointment will be our reevaluation appointment where we will do a full mouth reassessment and take intraoral photos with and without disclosing agent. At the reevaluation appointment, we have seen that the treatment has progressed well with evidence of reduced pocket depths, reduced bleeding, and reduced inflammation. The only increase was the plaque index. She had just come from lunch and did not have a chance to brush her teeth. Dun, da, da, da. Here we have a comparison in pocket charting. 
The purple numbers represent the initial pocket charting and the green numbers represent the revaluation pocket charting. We can see the reduction in pocket depth on the mesial buccal surface of tooth number 27 from 5 mm to 3 mm. Some of the oral hygiene instructions given were the use of the modified Stillman technique and the addition of a roll twice daily for two minutes. The patient did also purchase a brand new Sonicare electric toothbrush to help remove biofilm. We also recommended using the C-shaped bass ocular technique before bedtime and the incorporation of a fluoride anti-cavity mouthwash such as ACT. We also incorporated a three-month recare appointment to keep plaque biofilm at bay. After a thorough camera assessment, the patient assessed at high risk for caries. So I made the following recommendations. To reduce the intake of fermentable carbohydrate snacks, limit sodas including carbonated waters which the carbonic acid can reduce the pH in the mouth. Also to follow myplate.gov for recommendations on serving sizes and food groups for age, sex, height, and activity levels. Also, to supplement an age-appropriate multivitamin to supplement deficiencies in vitamins and minerals. Some of the research I did for my patient was why she had infrequent dental hygiene visits throughout her life. And in order to change this, I wanted to find out why people slip through the cracks. We all know the importance of periodontal maintenance, as it is required to prevent the return of disease and recurrent chronic periodontitis. Some of the assessments include extraoral and intraoral exam, reviewing medical and dental history, reviewing of radiographs, periodontal assessments such as pocket charting, plaque index, and moderate bleeding index, the removal of plaque biofilm of calculus, polishing, and plaque control efficacy evaluation. Some of the reasons that patients did not comply were the loss of insurance, improper patient education, and no placement of recall procedures. This project was honestly one of the most time-consuming and strenuous projects I've ever had to do, but it was very beneficial in order to help me become a very good clinician overall. Collecting all the data and putting all the puzzle pieces together will help me understand how to treat, motivate, and keep my patient interested in their care, not only in oral hygiene care, but general health as well.